Hi, everyone. I'm Virgil Texas. With me, Amber Frost, Matt Chrisman, Felix Biederman. Before we get into today's episode, a little bit of housekeeping is in order. Uh, Will Menneker has been suspended for his failure to deal with the rampant anti-Semitism that the rest of us engage in. <laughs> I mean, he's not pulling his weight. As the most anti-Semitic member of the show, I was shocked by Will's failure to curtail me in particular. Uh, we will be kinetically holding him accountable. Uh, even more egregious, uh, Will has denied that he did a bad job of containing the anti-Semitism. Uh, it's true. Uh, yeah, he... he... He, he acts like uh, he wasn't in those rooms with us watching us do all that anti-Semitism. Yeah. He keeps saying, he's saying he was <clears throat> on his phone. <laughs> yeah, we will be deplatforming him. Uh, now on to the business. True Heads will remember our Harvard Live show where we ran a March Madness style tournament to determine the most abominable alumnus from that hallowed institution. And now, three years later, as we approach an historic election, that has been dominated in its final days by failed children-related bombshells, we are once again running a bracket, this time to determine the biggest fail child. So, I mean, and, and who better? Who better? Who better? Exactly. The, the, the learned council of fail lords themselves. So uh, we have, in the, in the grand tradition of our, uh, of our past explorations into the world of uh, evil progeny and, and uh, evildoers in our society, we have assembled today an elite eight of the failest children of both the Republican and Democratic parties. And we're going to find out today between all of us here who is, in fact, the failest of them all. So we're going to start off with uh, the Democrats, everyone's favorite party. The and Democrats. The Democrats, the adrenochrome boys. Uh, and we're going to start off with a fail son who's fail sunness was only very recently uh clenched and that is joseph p kennedy the third of massachusetts of the mass of the massachusetts the of the hyannis kennedys uh and his name is specifically evocative because he's named for originally for joseph p kennedy the first who was a ruthless bootlegger stock jobber real estate vulture hollywood mogul and political power broker who single-handedly brought Irish Catholics from the periphery of the Democratic Party to the vital center by conspiring with Sam Giancana to make his horny, physically decrepit son president. Just a sheer will to power. Stopped only, by, uh, stopped only honestly, from becoming president himself by uh, his hilarious anti-Semitism. But uh, his grandsire, Joseph P. Kennedy III, or great-grandsire, rather, uh, is a small bean whom Congress, a small, wet bean. Joe P. Kennedy Trey uh, hustled his way to Stanford somehow. He got in. I don't know. Uh, also, Stanford. You can always tell the fail Kennedys by the ones who didn't go to Harvard because JFK mm -hmm. Jr. also, he went to Brown. It's like, goddamn kid, what, what the hell? Uh, and while he's there, uh, he hilariously joined a fraternity, the Kappa Alpha Order, that uh, cites Robert E. Lee as their spiritual inspiration <laughs> and is really notorious for cool. doing uh, Confederacy-themed uh, rush events at other campuses. Uh, and while he was there, he was so notorious, to a, his, so notorious for his aversion to alcohol that he n n earned the nickname Milkman. Oh. And I, I, I really think that it was probably just the, the color of his skin more than his teetotalism. Yeah, they are they milk. are uh, truly degrading. At this point, he's like a one of the degenerated uh, SpongeBob memes of a Kennedy. Yeah, no, he's like if the Kennedys had fled to live in the sewers and evolved into the creatures from the descent. Yeah, they're cave fish. They won't have eyes soon. Yeah, no, there, yeah, no eyes shortly. There's a lot making Joe the Third very strong in his bracket, and uh, you know, before we get into the debate, I'm gonna just sort of list them off. He's a great example of degeneration. Oh, yes. You start with Joseph Kennedy Sr. He was so anti-Semitic that he had to come up with a different name for Jews. Because <laughs> what he said was even too vile for the 1930s. He had to call them geese. Wait, <laughs> what? He would call them geese because he was like, they're loud. They always congregate in a bunch. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> hates them. And 
but yeah, no, he had to he had to even kind of dog whistle that even for then. Um, and then you go to his kids, and his kids were you know, I mean the main prize son he was killed in World War II, but then the, his backup, the second string quarterback of the Kennedy family, he um, Eskimo brothers with one of the most powerful mob leaders in the country, Sam Giancana, uh, killed by the deep state. Um, you know, his brothers, they were sort of foul in, in their own right, but one did get elected to Senate. One was attorney general. Yeah. One, and, one and, was enough yeah. of a threat. That the deep state killed him also. <laughs> yes. And then Joe the third, let's think of it. Let's unpack Joe the third's recent loss a little bit. Have you ever seen a primary challenger backed by the speaker of the house who is of that party? Uh, one of the head, the heads of the congressional Progressive Caucus, like Mar Pocan, getting it from all sides, flush with money, also using a super PAC, just eats it by double digits. How bad do you have to fuck up to be the first candidate to lose in Massachusetts? Ooh, I know. Brutal. The first ever. Mm -hmm. Ever. It's never happened before. Yeah, yeah. I, I will, I mean, not to be terribly, uh, you know, defensive of him. But he's still breathing, and given, <laughs> no, but given his handicap, you know. That's the actual own, though. A Kennedy who survives is a defective Kennedy. Mm, yeah, you even failed to self-destruct. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> and people say, what about Teddy? It's like, Teddy was a degraded-ass Kennedy. Mm. The, he, they turned him into a lion of the Senate because all the other ones were dead. It's true. He was always the like the pupil Kennedy, the the, yeah. the 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 one who didn't quite bake all the way through, uh, but just because of how far the family fell, he is a, a titan, and it certainly is a titan compared to this kid who couldn't even get elected in the state where they are basically all the people in Massachusetts are the people from Innsmouth who worship the old ones, yeah, and the old ones are the Kennedy, Kennedy. Yeah, it's true. You have two jobs: one is to win in Massachusetts, and the other is to self destruct. It reminds me kind of of this documentary I saw like made shortly after 9-11 about uh, failed suicide bombers and uh, hmm. the, the weight that they carried with them because they still greatly regretted their inability to, uh, to you know, <laughs> pull the like, trigger, have their, you, their, their mission. You know, that was their mission. You mean like Vietnam vets, just the, the emotional weight that they carried? Uh, they were haunted. They were truly haunted. Yeah, there's a great book about kamikaze pilots who, like, for whatever reason, yeah, they survived or the thing didn't go off. And uh, I don't know. I don't I don't know what the rest of Joe the Third's life has in store for him. Like with Pete Buttigieg, when he lost, I was kind of like, well, that was part of the design. We're going to have to deal with him yeah. for the rest of our lives. Yeah. yeah, he did his job. Joe the Third, no one's buying that crap. Nobody. Nope. No. Nope. Nope. And the funny thing is, is that it's not even like he had some. Uh, he they set him up to have a big star making turn to uh, launch him onto national prominence, where he could run for senate or president, which apparently some of his fucking advisors were telling him to do: go straight from the <laughs> house to the presidency in twenty twenty. Uh, and the thing that was supposed to do it was the State of the Union uh, reply in twenty eighteen, and he came out and just stammered. And muttered like a kid asking for uh, his prom date's car keys. And uh, the only thing anyone remembered <laughs> was just how wildly wet his fucking mouth was. Yeah. He was just a wet, stammering boy. And no one liked it. But there was this effort at the top levels of the Democratic media part, uh, campaign. And then, then like the, the most well-trained lapdogs among the populace be like, yes, this is amazing. And then that was what they tried to use to lead him to a senatorial race and it, it, it was pure name recognition for like two months and then people actually looked at him and saw him saw his lidless eyes blinking at them and just said nope and now honestly i feel like he's relieved because at no point did he ever indicate any actual desire to do what he was doing when they asked him why are you doing this he just clutched up something about like family duty like he thinks that to be a kennedy he has to do this even though no other part of him wants him to. And that's why I kind of feel happy for him that he ate shit so badly because now he can go off and do whatever the hell it is he really wants to do. It's a strange obligation that he didn't fully understand, this 
uh, ingrained belief that the the aimless swamp people of Massachusetts just needs a Kennedy. Yeah, and he happened to be the next guy available. Yeah, if he could be like an H, like a a very uh, upbeat HR director who does like team building exercises, I think that'd be like the, the acme of his interaction with the public. True, well, and, and who does. better? Who better? to um encourage the trust necessary for trust falls well his you know future prospects are kind of dim right now because correct me if i'm wrong he ended his campaign in debt and also committed multi-million dollar campaign fundraising violations oh shit yeah he also gave up his house seat so it's a long road back to the top i i don't think he makes it i think in massachusetts at this point he would be liable to lose a House primary to, like, I don't know who the Democrats are drafting these days. You know, the guy who trained the Panamanian death squads or whatever. Pretty sure that guy would beat him. That's the guy who took his seat. Yes, uh, uh, Jake Auschwitz. <laughs> Jake, Jake, for Jake Reinhard Heydrich. Uh, yeah. Um, but, you know, we'll see. He's very young, so the... It, we could possibly see him lose a state comptroller's race, a school board race. Mm. Uh, we could see him move to Buffalo, New York, and lose the mayoral election. Who knows? We'll I see. think Massachusetts is one of the few states that it does have a literal elected dog catcher. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. They love doing that shit in New England. Okay. So that's uh, J.K. the third. Good luck to him. Uh, next, we have, let's go with Virgil. Okay, you know who this is. It's Hunter Biden. Oh, yeah. He's, yeah. he's been in the news, or rather hasn't been in the news, because all information about him has been tactically shadow banned <laughs> from the internet. Uh, a little about him. He went to Yale in the 90s, then he got some jobs in the business industry. He was appointed uh, lead conductor of Amtrak during the Bush administration. Uh, when he was 43, this, uh, I, I, I don't think a lot of people know this. When he was 43, he applied to the Naval Reserve. Uh, this is uh, all his dad's vice president for just no reason that makes sense. Uh, and he was kicked and he was kicked out instantly for testing positive for cocaine. And he said he tested positive because he was smoking cigarettes that he bummed from guys who were do, doing cocaine. And the cigarettes were laced with cocaine. And uh, this is from Wikipedia. He chose not to appeal the matter with his you know, perfectly cromulent explanation, as it was unlikely the panel would believe his explanation, given his history with drugs, and also due to the likelihood of the news leaking to the press, which it ultimately did anyway. Okay, the only thing I'm getting out of this is hoping that his explanation is true, because the idea of a cocaine-laced cigarette is... I mean, that's a chocolate and peanut butter situation. Yeah. It's, it's, what do you mean? I mean, it's just a delicious. Uh, that's that's just great. <laughs> that's just great. That's chunky monkey right there. That's that's brilliant. I don't think you can smoke powdered cocaine. You can. Virgil, I'm just not familiar. Virgil, let me dream, okay? <laughs> um, Hunter, I, I want to talk. I I think the Navy story is my favorite Hunter thing. Yeah. Because if you read that article, it, they're coming back from Bo's funeral. Hunter and his wife, and he goes, "I think I'm going to join the Navy." And his wife goes, you have to be sober to do that. And they were just sat in silence for the rest of the car ride. <laughs> that is so awesome. But also, like, joining the Navy when you're 43 because you have to find yourself is, I think that is, like, you ask me who is Hunter Biden, that is Hunter Biden. Not even the Navy, the Naval Reserve. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is a guy whose angst, whose just, like, sense of himself as a being thwarted by his own weakness but the but his ambitions clearly being big enough to require the, the sort of self-destruction that he wreaks upon himself has led him to a position now where the entire global deep state media apparatus of government has hit a big red button to prevent people from finding out about his foot job and crack smoking videos <laughs> that is how powerfully fucked up he is that he is in the last weeks of this election just grinding the thing to a halt and fixating all the minds of uh, every Republican psycho on earth uh, and every terrified liberal in a position of media power to keep people from talking about Hunter's foot jobs. Which is, honestly, it's uh, talk about eating your seed corn here. If you're going to press the big button and just do overt censorship, why waste it on this, which is not even a story if it got huge play that was going to impact the election because nobody genuinely cares. I'll tell you why, because that's how fail Hunter is. 
Mm. That's how powerfully fail he is. Hunter is living in Groundhog Day. Like, <laughs> Hunter's, Hunter, like, his actions. Have you, like, heard, like, seen or heard whispers of the hack materials where, you know, there's a, he measures his dick and it's, by the way, yeah. nine inches. Uh, no, he measured it wrong. You can clearly see. It's probably it's like, seven and a half. Um, it's closer to seven and a half. You, just, if you can see how he angles the tape and it's just such an obvious dumb guy <laughs> lying yeah. move. Yeah. Like anyone with two <laughs> eyes can see like, dude, what? that's not how you measure a cock. Hunter yeah. is- I mean, I, I have a uh, don't look at people's <laughs> nudes rule. Uh, so I'm not looking at it, but I do firmly believe that he got one of those uh, little 90 calorie um, airline Coca-Cola cans to use for scale. Like he's one of those guys. For his you know, he uses thing. an actual tape measure and he basically takes the hypotenuse of his dick. <laughs> he, he has a decent, he has a decent dick, but it's not nine inches. Um, yeah, but still great. It's still a great dick, but um, he's fucking girls on like a floor mattress uh, literally, it's just on the floor. There is like he has, you know, those posts where it's like, this is what this is what my room looks like because I'm a bisexual Gemini, and it's just like empty McDonald's cups and trash yes. everywhere. That's what Hunter's room looks like, and he's like fifty. He's, yeah, yep. yes, he's it, living but, it. But he's, yeah, like, every, Hunter, yeah. if you look at those, you know about Hunter's life between that, like his lifestyle, and the thing where he's like, I'm literally gonna go to China and have Chinese intelligence do a multi-million dollar business deal with me, with me. It's like he is in some part, it's when Bill Murray keeps trying to kill himself in Groundhog's Day. He's like, how can I fuck this up? How can I like be sent to prison and like keep my dad from getting elected? And the universe is like, no, no. And if it will make it illegal to post a news article about you, no one can talk about you. Yeah. And I mean, that's kind of his uh, saving grace here is that he does have the Biden magic where tragedy and blessings are visited upon him in equal measure. He just manages to blow it constantly. I mean, he's his own biggest, I mean, he's, he's very self-destructive, but he somehow, I mean, like that China, he got a diamond out of it. He got a giant diamond. He got a diamond. I didn't know that. They yeah. need him with a diamond. Yeah. That's just like a normal, <laughs> like, a normal Indiana welcome Jones. To our Was he off? like Indiana Jones swapping for the, the remains of Emperor Murhachi. <laughs> Was he offered a, a choice, like, let's make a deal style? Like, you can have the cash, or you can have this <laughs> the box. The box. <laughs> yeah. And he he was some... He is, I'm still getting my head around the fact that one of the women he was dallying with in this, uh, uh, this middle-aged rumspringa he's on is Weed Slut 420? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Amazing. He's finding Instagram thoughts. He's not just... Uh, he, 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 like, Chinese intelligence honeypots... Uh, homeless women, apparently, according to that New Yorker New Yorker article, and uh, e thoughts. It's amazing. He's got, but these aren't even these all aren't, the ladies on the line. These aren't even honey pots. He's just taking these. All the photos I've seen in videos are just like photos and videos he's taken of himself. I'm sure though that that yeah, but that they they just get in the room with him to make sure that uh you know that like there's a the bug in the laptop or whatever. I mean, how certain are we that Hunter has made any effort in his life to keep any of this private? Yeah. Because yeah. I think it's he's an open book. Like that's his virtue. Is like, look, yeah, I guess I am a piece of shit. Yeah, it's... yeah, because he is. He is. He does have the soul of an artist, of a tragic artist. He does yeah. paint and too. I can. He, and he, was, I honestly... he went to L.A. a while ago, and he was painting. Yep. I look at. I mean, you see his back tattoo of the finger lakes, and <laughs> you just see him just like just getting so fucking high in like every apartment Felix has ever lived in. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like I know exactly what the sh- what the the shame what the spiral is for him every single time. He tells himself, "All right, I'm not going to smoke crack." And then whoops, he's suddenly he's smoking crack. Ah, God damn it! Like a fucking Instagram poet uh, and a fucking like red scare guest. And uh, you know he just he smokes too much crack, and then he just he just goes and he sobers up and he goes into this fucking shame spiral, and he's like. Fuck it. Life isn't worth fucking living. I'm going to join the Naval Reserve. Don't try to stop me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he is. I mean, I he's, I guess, in any objective sense, he's a bad guy, right? He's sure. trading. He's trading off awful family's name. He's going all over the world doing deals with God knows who. He's irresponsible. He's reckless. He's impulsive. 
But you can't help but like him because he knows he's all these things. Yeah. And it's destroying him inside. That yeah. everything else. He hasn't he hasn't built some sort of fantasy justification for his position, or he's so just dull that it doesn't even occur to him that allows like some of these other fail kids to just grease through life without having huge spectacular scandals because they're not accumulating that uh sense of dis uh discontent and alienation because they are not they are in some respect delusional about their own relationship yeah. to the, yes. the you world. know what you know what the perfect yeah. hunter thing is? Don Jr. has slaved for the past mm-hmm. five years to do everything that would make his dad love him. Going out of his way to make him try to win the election on the margins, campaign for congressional seats he needs, uh, just making meme after meme about how his dad's so cool and hot and fucks everyone. <laughs> Hunter is probably his dad's biggest fucking liability politically besides Absolutely. His own dementia. Yes. Um, reckless, like nearly tore apart his family by fucking his brother's widow seriously left, left her for a, like god knows who else ended up with a woman who he married after knowing a week and got a tattoo that said shalom on his bicep knocked her up all this shit getting sued for paternity like hugely embarrassing things and is like he literally like so heartbreaking texts his dad i'm sorry that i'm so fucked up that i'm such a fucked up drug addict and the thing that went viral, the thing that everyone talked about was his dad going, you're not fucked up. I love you. <laughs> like his dad saying, I love you in front of every in a private mm-hmm. moment. So, you know, it was authentic. And then yeah. everyone sees it. What is what is Don Jr. got from his dad publicly? Like, thanks. <laughs> thanks. Good job. Thanks. Yeah. OK, uh, just have like a good I, one. Shake. I actually yeah. had to oh, backtrack God. because Brutal. I was under the impression that because, you know, Biden had, you know, the, the good son that died. Um, and Hunter's, you know, mother died. So he's, he's had a, he's had a life of tragedy. I assumed that Biden was just always, I assumed it was a kind of stand by me, the wrong son died situation, but I take that back. Yes. He's embarrassed of his son, but Hunter's, what he has going for him is, uh, he actually does have his father's love and a diamond. Hunter, yeah, is, I know. Uh, Hunter, Amber, you put it perfectly when you said a unique, unique sense of blessing and curses. Like mm-hmm. everyone sees your humility. Like imagine you take a photo high out of your mind where you're wearing a sheer link jacket, sunglasses indoors and no shirt. You wouldn't want your enemies to see that. Everyone saw it. Everyone saw you fucking weed slut 420. Everyone saw your disgusting room. Everyone knows everything about you. But then the only thing everyone could talk about is how much your dad loves you. He does. Wow. He really does. What a, to get out of that. Yeah. Imagine your dick pics leak and everyone just talks about how it's big. <laughs> <laughs> what a life. Oh, man. What a biblical figure our guy Hunter is. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, King if, David, if, DJ, like. if DJ TJ ever had a scandal, it would be because like Aubrey O'Day or whoever leaked his uh, his sects or something. And then his dad would, if anything, be like, loser dad junior. Pat, look at the penis. I'm not sure if he's mine. <laughs> Just shred him. It would be an additional destruction. <laughs> Don Jr.'s sex would be like, it's going to be so lit when I'm in your vagina. Like everyone, <laughs> it would be a national laughing stock. Yeah. Like every woman I follow is talking about how hot Hunter is. Yeah. Like yeah. just different beasts. Hunter, Don Jr.'s sex are like, ooh, I'm horny. <laughs> 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 He uses the tongue emoji a lot. <laughs> oh God! Yeah. Whereas, uh, like, uh, Hunter's sex is like he sends a picture to the girl with like just holding a gun to his forehead. <laughs> <laughs> and the woman is just like, "Oh my God!" Yeah. 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 All right. So next we get. Uh, let's go with Amber, Chelsea Clinton. Um. Well. <laughs> Okay, so obviously, like, the Fredo of the Clinton crime family. Mm-hmm. Um, like, there's... Chelsea's main thing is that she is incredibly lame. Yes. Um, I think that in some ways serves to her advantage because she doesn't have the kind of disaster energy that, say, a hunter would have, but she is deeply cringe constantly. So, I mean... 
getting the jobs with the, you know, Clinton Foundation, the Clinton Global Initiative. I mean, that's embarrassing. Uh, marrying the guy with the fake job, the, the, the investment banker, that's embarrassing. But it's really her sort of um, parallel professional pursuits that are the worst thing about her. I think her sort of aspirations of being kind of a, a public mommy figure. Um, famous women that venture into children's book authors, the worst people on earth. Like the yeah, absolute it's, worst it's people. So tr- it's such a transparent cash grab. It's just like, uh, money, please. It, it, here's five pages where I just like sit down with some uh, hack and go, uh, and then I, I just want her to kind of look like a, uh, a young me, but like if she was a blueberry. And then you just. <laughs> <laughs> you, know what, you know what's so evil about the kids' book racket is. You're just a new generation of children. You're just implanting all your shitty neuroses on them. It's yes. like the book, the book is like, it could be very simple. And it's like, yeah, it's called like, you know, the happy caterpillar. And it's like about a caterpillar who's not good at turning into a butterfly, but it's okay. But it's like written in, even though it is probably mostly ghost written, it is still part of the a product of the psychological development of a complete cipher who, like her only input from the world is just like being given these gifts from global capital on behalf of her parents. And then people who are like, your dad's a pedophile and they're kind of right. Yeah. See, that's the other thing too, is that obviously like this is a landmine for her because I think she should just generally stay away given her last name from anything children related. I mean, mm-hmm. it's a red flag immediately. But she's like, no, no, no. I'm going to become like a Twitter mommy blogger. And I'm going to write a book about girl bosses. And uh, I, I, the other thing about the kids book thing is that the worst part about it is that if it's, if you're arguing that it's not grooming, which, you know, whatever, allegedly, what you're doing is writing books for a six to nine-year-old uh, age level that will only be bought by women with eight unpaid internships that went to Brown. Yep. Mm-hmm. No child will read it. No child will read it. a single child it. will read it. Do not care. Yeah. And honestly, um, though, I think the biggest crime that Chelsea has ever committed is her endorsement of the condom blowjob. I think we can all agree on that. <laughs> that was wild. Yeah. Chelsea, I, the big thing I think about with Chelsea is her clapbacks. Like when, yes, you know. This is, this is my thing, though. Like. Well, look, we will get to that part. Hang on just a second. First, I want to go with the uh, the uh, the spinach pancakes. Does anyone remember this? Oh, yes, I yes, do. Yes, I remember. Right. Okay, so obviously one of the worst crimes you can commit online is posting your ugly food. Mm-hmm. Um, and she combined that crime with the helicopter mom thing because – Her kid apparently has um, an iron deficiency or something. Um, I assume they're using its blood for adrenochrome and like the blood loss itself, you know, obviously contributes to to uh, an iron deficiency. So she makes these spinach pancakes, which are absolutely horrifying looking. And people rightfully roast the green monstrous pancakes. Her response to it is as if someone insulted her child personally and she has a meltdown about the pancakes so much so that the Washington Post actually wrote an article Chelsea Clinton responds to criticism of her spinach pancakes which are in quotes because even the Washington Post can't fathom the idea of of a of a concept like spinach pancakes like they're pancakes in definition by the most technical definition but having spinach in them really reduces the it's in a different genre now and this actually made news in 2017 i just want to read the opening line here this is a 36 year old woman political scion college professor mother of two chelsea clinton is many things but food photographer she is not i think the idea that your cringe, your cringe post makes it into the Washington Post, 
because your response to it is so embarrassing. I don't know. There's something more undignified than having M&Ms on your dick there. I mean, I think she's a really <laughs> strong contender here. And uh, obviously, like, the greatest example, though, of her cringe is her, I don't know, uh, political battles with a uh, friend of the show, Adam Friedland. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, the fact that she had to ban a Comtown cast member for anti-Semitism on Twitter, because that's what, <laughs> that's how she posts. She posts cringe. She cannot let it go. And that's her main cultural contribution at this point. That's the only thing that she can do. That's the only that's the only public space she can carve out for herself. Yeah, her Chelsea Clinton's repertoire, like we just alluded to the condom blowjob post. That was because someone just uh, you know, letting off steam at work or whatever, just replied to her, like, suck my dick, and she said Maybe with a condom, which is uh, also a great way to protect yourself, like a mask, wear a mask. Like, she, when, you know, QAnon Gary says to her, you're going to be executed for pedophilia, you sick bitch. And she said, she'll go like, oh, well, you know, maybe I should have gotten my flu shot. But the second part, that's, you know, that's your call. And right. then the most chastened, bowed people on the earth, the people who want to be terracotta soldiers in the Clinton tomb, cheer her on. Like, yeah. it is perverse behavior. And she can't stop. She has a pathology. I mean, in some ways, it is similar to Hunter in that she she's compulsive about it. But it's so much more embarrassing because there's something truly piteous about a crack addict whose like brother and mother died uh and who just cannot get his shit together this girl it, it's just it's so much more disgusting to look at somehow yeah it's it's more upsetting for whatever reason yeah i can't pinpoint it but she truly is um she's a there, there's nothing there's nothing cinematic or interesting or truly sympathetic about about her failures. There's no pathos. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. It's it's um it's the it's the kind of H she's the most HR kind of like fail kid, I think. Yeah. Can I just add one last detail about her uh that I saw recently? Uh, according to Business Insider, uh, when she was being paid six hundred thousand dollars annually for a, con- a contract with NBC News, they did the breakdown and ended up that she was paid uh, twenty six thousand seven hundred and twenty four dollars for each minute she appeared on air. Yeah. Wait, wait. That's wait, wait. That that's how much it costs to get a minute of her. Yes. Okay. Well, I mean, we, we make more than that. Yeah, that's Come basically our cameo cost, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. All right. Let's get a shout right, out from Chelsea. Email in there. Yeah, I mean that's the thing though with these people. It's it's it doesn't matter how much of a, a technical failure they are on just on any level that we would value as a society or should. Um, they're still making like twenty seven thousand dollars a minute for this stuff. Yeah, Chelsea is probably one of the most profoundly untalented people in the public sphere. Yeah, but very well compensated per talent. Yeah. Yeah, she is the she's the ideal notion of uh, a kid who just absorbs nothing, just like a blank bolt or or you know, just a, a slug. She's just an absolute dud in every respect, which you have to think that the Clintons are deeply, deeply, deeply ashamed of, because well, you know they're the fucking Macbeths. They want to create like a little antichrist to go out and continue their dark uh, mission, and they just got this this I love lamp ass daughter who just kind of wants to stare at the drywall. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like it, to some degree it is the parents' fault. Well, certainly. But, well, I yeah. Mean, I yeah. don't think it's what they wanted. Yeah. Bill, Clinton, yeah. Bill Clinton for, and Bill Clinton's one of the greatest demons of the last 40 years. A true soulless fucking sociopath scumbag who in a civilized society would be made an example out of. I mean, with a uh, Bartlett style rebuke verbally. Um, but undeniable magnetism. Everyone, friend and foe, bring it up. The undeniable yep. charisma and personal magnetism of Bill Clinton. Do you think Chelsea has that? Yeah. No. Yeah, it's it's slick willy. I mean, that's it's it's that for a reason. I mean, he had a, you know, major like public embarrassment and somehow 
came out of it, you know, like people were nostalgic about him during Bush too. They were like, ah, remember that? Ah, you did the one thing. But is that really a big deal? And, After uh, NAFTA. Yeah, people liked him so fucking much. They liked him. He got rehabbed quicker than maybe any American president. They adored him just because he, I mean, just he, like he was almost charisma. never. He, you can almost say like at the media level, he needed a redemption, but he never really lost popularity. Yeah. Even yeah. during the depths of the impeachment. So he never even really had to come back. That's just how powerful his hold was over people. Yeah. And Hillary, you know, obviously very polarizing figure, uh, like absolute awful shit candidate, but commands a small army. There you know, people- has dedicated followers. Chelsea hasn't been able to leverage that into anything. She is, yeah, she is the I Love Lamp daughter. Hil- Hillary is at least spiteful and will go out to destroy anyone who harms her. And is she is loyal to her most inner circle, the Humas, the whatevers. Um, I She's got big Ahab energy. I can't think yes. of anything like that for Chelsea. I can't think of anything for Chelsea. I can't think of anything she does. Just a total nullity. Yeah. yeah. Which might yeah. make her the most fail, honestly, because like mm-hmm. she's failed at even being capable of failing. True. She's she's just yep. static. Like you yeah. look at her and it's just an outline of television static. Yeah. The only time good. she ever shows up is when she, you know, makes the news for just being embarrassingly cringe yep. in a in a suburban housewife kind of way. Okay, so finally we got uh, Felix. Dude bros, start your whining because here's a badass chick in the pharmaceutical industry. <laughs> Starting as a clerk at Mylan, a now massive concern that owns EpiPens, Abbott Laboratories, and several lethal injection drugs, we have Heather Bresch. Heather Bresch, the daughter of Democratic hero Joe Manchin, rose to the position of CEO. But it wasn't just her brains and charm. No, behind every successful senator's daughter, there is a pained, fat-faced ogre who is completely hurt purple for half of the time. <laughs> That's right. In 1992, when Joe Manchin was just a repulsive state senator and not yet an utterly repellent U.S. senator, he told Mylan CEO Mylan Puskar that his daughter was looking for work. Sadly, the world hates a woman who kicks ass and takes names. Brash, who had risen to CEO, was accused of not completing her MBA, which is already a degree for babies. <laughs> uh, she still ran the company like a boss. Milan's success was so shocking that even Democrats called them out, with the late Elijah Cummings mansplaining to Brash in 2016 that his allergy <laughs> broke constituents were being exploited by Milan raising the price of EpiPens by 500%. Bresch countered by stating Mylan only profited $100 per unit. The units range from $500 to $700. Mylan was also accused of being part of a price-fixing cartel for generics and had to pay the government $465 million as as part of a settlement for underpaying Medicaid rebates. But sometimes you have to put your hair into a messy bun, get a pot of coffee going, put on some gangster rap, and handle it. Leaving the company in 2019 with a 300 with a 37.6 million dollar exit package after 28 years, spitting in the face of your dad's pig constituents, and getting your shit sandblasted by Croatian boy men that you imported shipping containers <laughs> until you peacefully die at age 140, surrounded by cretinous mansion family members who want a bigger chunk of your inheritance so they can make their goblin core melodic crunch vibe rap album, which will be the genre, the most popular genre of music when Bresh dies of natural causes in the year 2110. Peace. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's all. Bresh. That's about right. Uh, yeah. The perfect exemplar of the, the, the failed child as just a carrion eater. Like, Hey, my dad's got this whole political career and this uh, profile. I could be a politician, but he, eh, I could also just make a lot of money with some of the monstrous fucking corporate interests that backstop his entire uh, uh, career. And and I'm just going to lay in the cut and just soak it in like some bottom feeding sucker fish. uh, Though you left one out. My, there's circumstantial evidence that Brash and Mylan are behind the Beat Bernie 2020 were behind the Beat Bernie 2020 super PAC that appeared in February. Oh, oh you mean Hillary? Oh, you mean uh, Hillary Warren? Hillary Warren's uh, super PAC—the one she said she wouldn't have. 
No, this was uh, this was not a candidate aligned super PAC. It was oh. one that appeared out of nowhere and spent millions of dollars to sink Bernie. Just a bunch of concerned citizens. Yeah, uh, that's what it's done. Actually, that's what their uh, uh, Twitter bio says. Amber, we are Democrats, people of color, millennials. Oh. <laughs> we're, <laughs> oh. we're regular voters who want a candidate that will hashtag unite the left. It's finally time to hashtag Pete Burns. Oh, mm. yeah, she is. I think out of the Democratic bracket, Heather Brish is the shittiest person. Oh, absolutely. Dog no shit soul. Soul of garbage. Well, this uh, brings up the question of how, what rubric do we use to decide who advances? Is it the person who has failed the most profoundly, or is it the person who has done the most evil? I don't think it's the person who's done the most evil, because that's not necessarily that's not a fail. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think that she's fail in the sense that she's certainly not doing her father any favors as a part of his political project, which is where I think the fail part comes in. But she's making her fucking stacks, and she's staying on the right side of Johnny Law, mm-hmm. unlike Hunter. I think the choice comes down to uh, Hunter, if our definition of fail uh, is like the most spectacular failure, mm-hmm. or uh, Chelsea, if it's the most profound existential like failure. Because right. Hunter has failed it's- magnificently, but Chelsea is incapable of right. failing in any way that is noticeable because she is incapable of provide preside, presiding over any sort of uh, character, any sort of like will to power, which I can't think of a more thorough uh, a failure to uh, uh, carry on the legacy of a family than her failure to provide any sort of like vessel for uh, anything. It's like she almost... is a gla- she is just a, a, a half empty glass of tap water of a human being. It's almost actually difficult to compare them. I mean, it's really apples to oranges. It's like mm-hmm. Hunter is like the Michael Bay movie of failures, yeah. and Chelsea is like a Chantal Ackerman movie of failures. Yeah, like it's like a it's a it's a bleak French movie full of silence and in slow, intense degradation. So yes. it's like, you know, it, it's really difficult. It's really difficult to compare them. One is spectacular, um, and one is mind-numbingly banal in a way that is, frankly, also traumatic to observe. I, yes. yes. I have to submit my vote for Chelsea, because Hunter, <clears throat> for how foul he is and how cursed he is, he also has whatever covenant with God, whatever yeah. magical thing can pull him from the jaws of hell. Blessed he, and cursed in I, equal he, measure. He, that's, he is the, going, that's the Biden magic. He is going to be the president's son, most likely. Chelsea is the dead end of the Clinton dynasty. She mm-hmm. has nothing. Nothing. Yeah. And, and I don't think her parents love her. <laughs> I, I don't either. I, and, and I will say this. In many ways, Hunter being the president's son is a massive failure on his point. Uh, on his end, because you know he he wants that not to happen more than anything. You know he doesn't want to be the president's son. He wants his father to succeed, but he doesn't want to be a part of it. It yeah. it it must be just absolutely grinding for him to have that kind of ambivalence. I do not believe that Hunter is a failure by his own standards. I believe he is a true romantic. He is someone who recognizes the triviality of business and politics, which is why he eschewed a career in the business industry or following in his father's footsteps. He's someone who recognizes the ephemerality of all human success. He's someone who doesn't care if he lives or dies, and I respect that, so I'm going to go with Chelsea. Yeah, me too. I think yeah. it's Chelsea. Yeah. yeah. So next we've got the Republicans, and uh, some men are blessed in this life, like Mike Huckabee. He parlayed his success <laughs> as an Arkansas governor into a career as a celebrated weird Twitter account. And, well, <laughs> some powerful men are lucky if they can sire one hideous fail son. Mike has been blessed with two. The twin AJs to Sarah's Meadow, David <laughs> and John Mark Huckabee, set the standard for sons both fail and large. David with his penchant <laughs> for dog murder and bringing loaded guns onto airplanes. And John Mark with his co-starring role as Bumpus in the 2018 film Christmas, A Revenge Tale, in which a video editor refuses a job offer 
from Huckabee's crime lord on Christmas Eve and must cut a bloody swath of yuletide vengeance across the rented McMansion I'm going to assume it was shot in. Compared to the political careers of their father and sister, these boys are certainly fail, but much more importantly, these boys are large. So large. Just some big, beefy boys. The kind of sons you'd find sitting on the floor of your finished basement smashing light bulbs with a hammer. (laughs) Sort of kids you'd have to hose off in the driveway after they get carried away during a county fair pie-eating contest. (laughs) Just some extra large sons who love to rub house. Yep. The Huckabee boys, two for one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're talking about double size there. That's, yeah. Yeah. And I don't know much more we can honestly say about them. These guys have been part of Twitter lore for years. They're the archetypal hulking oafish uh offspring of a po- of a politi- of a politician uh in their case i think their failness is sort of mitigated by the fact that their father is himself hulking and oafish in every way you'd want and they almost seem like kind of perfections of huckabee rather than degradations of huckabee og they're og large sons and Indeed. you have to say something you know that says something for them in some way yeah. He's an interesting character in American politics because, you know, he for a time he was more successful than he deserved to be because he was such a hee-haw throwback. Mm -hmm. If he had been 50 percent less hee-haw, he'd probably be, you know, a senator right now. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And his son his uh, fail sons are, you know, perfectly represent that. Yeah. Mike Huckabee was beloved for a very short window because he was enormously fat and lost a lot of weight. And that was like. It was probably the greatest thing you could do in 2006, 2007. You know, no one was going to win a rock. We weren't going to fix anything, but you sure could lose a lot of weight. And that would take care of one of <laughs> America's problems. And he was like, he, he was one of the only guys who was like, uh, let's not um, like hang effigies of Barack Obama at rallies. And so yeah. Democrats were like, now this is a Republican I respect, but he could only like really hold it in for a year. And after a year, he was like, well, God, God, shucks, I don't know what the heck a Dominican is. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, he just reverted to being his hee haw himself. And his main legacy now is his enormous sons who killed the dog. <laughs> his right. giant dog killing boys. Yeah. And I think they heard, I think they heard Huckabee because imagine Huckabee walking into CPAC. You know, this, this motherfucker's name is Mike Huckabee and he, you know, he has the hee haw voice. Like maybe they could accept that. But then you see his, you know, massive sons just tromping in behind him in their fucking overalls. Like, like, no, this is not going to be our nominee. Yep. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. It's a bit like, um, I mean, he's a real cracker barrel cracker. And yeah. he has been able to sort of break from that a little bit with the weight loss and with the, you know, maybe, uh, you know, don't post pictures of Barack Obama with the Photoshop to have a bone through his nose. But then his sons wander in, and you're like, "Oh, we know who you are." It's like uh, it's like those uh, ads in uh, South Korea for plastic surgery with the really attractive couple with the ugly children, you know? Because it's like <laughs> you can't hide who you really are when people see your spawn. It's interesting because Huckabee kind of could have pivoted to, like, I don't know, just appealing to. You know, just like suburban moms who are not necessarily religious or from the South, just on the basis of his like friendly seeming weight loss books. Yeah. Then the whole then the whole then the whole clan shows up, you know, strumming their banjos. And you're like, no, this is too. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Huckabee Huckabee did better with uh, black voters, according to some exit polls and a lot of Republicans in the same time frame did. He had the makings of someone who could have been a crossover media stars. But yeah. you can't have sons who are constantly falling into barrels of molasses. No, mm-hmm. no, it was off. yeah, like they they were the return of his repressed <laughs> hillbilly self. But he, he couldn't deny that. <laughs> like you could throw a big tablecloth over him, but they're going to see the outline, and it <laughs> undermined their ability to be a transitional figure. And he ended up just having to double down on his corn pone stuff. And then he ended up going to what? Uh, uh, Pat Robertson's television station to tell knock knock jokes. He does one of the <laughs> his show. His show is like it's like a piece of outsider art. Like you get guys who have toured like the schoolhouse circuit in Arkansas who come on there and tell jokes about the differences between Methodists and Presbyterians. Yeah, it it's, it's the right wing version of Pete Seeger's Rainbow Room. Yeah, okay. it's like yeah, it's like Comic View for guys who have a fourth favorite pocket knife. <laughs> 
Okay. Uh, now we're going to go with Virgil. All right. Well, she came to prominence in 2007 when she started blogging to support her father, John McCain's presidential campaign. Ooh. And this kicked off a career writing cloyingly sexy right of center publications. But I'm talking books with titles like Politics Under the Sheets or a blog <laughs> or a blog named like Garters and Governing. Ooh. Oh. And in uh, 2008, 2010, that era, DC people pretended like this was scandalous, likely because of the, the Beltway media's obsession with her father run off, uh, rubbed off on her. I mean, she's very much so a creature of this quaint Joe the Plumber era of cutesy blogosphere meme bullshit who should have gone the way of the dinosaurs, but has managed to persist on the basis of her father's name. Uh, one note, a New York Times fashion article from 2010 headline, Daughter of John McCain is a rebel. Uh, she's also the token right-wing panelist on The View and is married to another fail child, noted plagiarist Ben Domino's Pizza. Ah, uh, yes. Mm. And it's, um, that's a classic marriage type in the conservative sphere. It's not a May-December romance, but one of the words rhymes with May. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, my favorite story, I think this was in one of her books, is she decided to marry him at the 2016 RNC. I might be telling this wrong, but whatever. Uh, she decided to marry him at the 2016 RNC when she was so upset over Trump that he, he took her back to the hotel and like got her P.F. Chang's. And yeah, she was no, like, this is the one. You got it. I, I think it was Panda Express, but you got it right. I think Panda Express, yeah. yeah. Um, just a, yeah, just a real, she's very fail, but I got to say, um, well, we'll save this for the debate portion. I think she's, she's made good on becoming a mainstream figure. It's true. She's on that yeah. show. I mean, she's only there because everyone on the, on the set and watching hates her. But that's yep. still a job. Like wrestling heel is a job. Yeah, yeah. it is. She's yeah. a very I mean, successful I, I, heel. She's very good at it. Like she's but able honestly, to get people to hate her, which of course, as we were saying, Chelsea Clinton incapable of doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, but she did luck out by getting plucked for that job. But I mean, I don't know. It's kind of redundant to say it because she did get it because of her father's name. Right. Yeah. 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 She's made the most of the inevitable opportunity she was going to get, which is yeah. she has. She really has. Well, yeah. after she, though, after failing over and over and over again, too. Yeah. Like it's almost like she was blog. awarded this as an, uh, an accumulation of her fails. Yeah. Uh, because I mean, she, again, she invented her own position for her father's campaign and then was fired from it from a position she created for himself after they found out she was doing it. That's impressive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is. That's a lot of that's 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 like a lot of, uh, uh, you know, just like how to stay in your job type strategy you know like like that's like advice scott Al uh, scott adams would write in a dilbert book right uh but you know she but like her actual like on her own achievements like there's there's not like nobody reads her books nobody buys her books nobody is buying filibusters and french kissing <laughs> yeah okay uh, uh amber um i mean what is there to say uh we've already said that uh you know, in some ways you feel worse for the Trump kids because their father hates them. I think uh, his I, Virgil has brought this up that like uh, Don Jr.'s inability to maintain a marriage like indicates that in some ways he's like the less competent of of the Trump children, uh, which is sort of like saying a lot for the brothers specifically. Mm -hmm. um, he does embarrass himself quite a bit. But mostly, it's almost unfair to call him a fail child because it's like he's one of the few kids who had kind of a, um, I don't know, his the, the favors or quote-unquote favors he was given uh, by his father are, in fact, also poisoned with his father's contempt for him. That's so, for sure. It's not a, it's not like a pure it's not like a pure leg up, you know. It's it's a mm -hmm. it's an amb mm -hmm. it's an ambivalent kind of um deal. Uh I guess that said, he does have um uh he does have the five children, so you know, success is no condom king clearly. <laughs> I I'm also judging people by by how many uh, spawn they produce here. I think that's a major factor. Um I think the big thing though is like you know, the meme lordery and his effort to sort of go into the Bill O'Reilly thing with his books, um, writing books like Triggered, 
you know, like yeah. called Triggered. And then he has what he thinks is like a smoldering headshot of himself on the cover because he's trying to do the Trump thing of making himself like, a, you know, the brand, trying to sort of utilize the Trump brand. But he can't even like take a headshot and have it like photoshopped to where he has a chin in it. So I don't know. I mean, like, he's a pretty big failure. Uh, he's There's up there a, in, in a lot in a mere uh, uh, he's not a massive failure in any one category but he's a great all-around player there's a reason why don jr was chosen and not eric imagine if you were born into this rich family and your your brother your competition is eric trump <laughs> like that's your whole life is a layup right yeah. and this guy is just getting dunked on Yep. Yeah, he got dunked on by Jared fucking Kushner, who's the one who got a job in the White House because Trump didn't trust any of those people he doesn't know. And he couldn't pick any of his kids, including the guy who has his literal name, the one who he his wife tried to use as a bargaining chip in their divorce settlement. And it failed because Trump called her bluff because he didn't want him either. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I, I, I would say the his pivot to being a me triggered meme guy like that's that's a huge demerit right there that's just more evidence that he completely failed at his nepotism like business career yes uh he failed to do like a real politics job and now he's hanging out with charlie kirk yeah he is he yep. is uh, he's fleeing the politics the way that all the sickos online who have failed at everything in life and say well hey i'm gonna i'm gonna attach myself to politics as an identity because it's easier than anything and that requires you know like a resume or a bill and he's just coming at it and he's only even able to do that surely through the power of his name Every definitely single, the most multi-failed versatile of, of fail kids i think in this category every single one of the you know the right new right you know triggered personalities like every single one is a failed stand-up or a failed actor or a failure in some other field like this is that's where you go that's where the garbage chute leads yep all right all right uh felix all right, all right. Ten Hut, <laughs> Alpha Bravo, Thirty Code Red, Baja Blast, Game Shark Gamma Delta. We are enrapturing the target in a kinetic manner requisite to target and being great sons to request that evac over. Some men are born great. Others are meant to be villains of history. But there are some who were always meant to be sons. Michael Flynn Jr. is such a man. <laughs> Mike Jr. is the son of the most clenched jaw to ever grace the American NATSEC state in Michael Flynn Sr. Flynn Sr. was like a working dog for the deep state. He was amazing at his one purpose, which was connecting one Al-Qaeda cell phone to another or triangulating ISIS locations through telecom devices. But if you put a cake at the edge of the counter or left the door open, you'd have a problem. Flynn was more or less forced out of the Defense Intelligence Agency in 2014 and underwent a change you usually only see in men subjected to divorce, even though he hadn't. Though his marriage stayed the same, Flynn had a new fling in the form of Turkey. Though at one time, Flynn, the general, had hated Turkey and thought of Tayyip Erdogan as a not-so-stealth Islamist, uh, once he was paid a few hundred thousand dollars, he changed his tune. By the time he was working for the Trump campaign, Flynn was given an important job, to kidnap Fethullah Gulen, a former Erdogan friend turned foe who lives in exile in Pennsylvania. You can't just pick any imbecile for the job. You need someone with kinetic experience, tactical awareness, and killer instinct. You have to pick your son who is named after you and is a 34-year-old golf instructor who posts conservative memes all day. <laughs> Unfortunately, the plan that would have saved Turkey, America, and PA public schools never materialized. Mike Jr. got shit-canned from the Trump transition team, and Mike's dad got shit canned from the admin itself, and then the pair got wrapped up in the Mueller investigation. They generally escape ruin and imprisonment, in part due to Mueller's immense senility and the fact that people really don't care if you do Turkey, only Russia or Ukraine. Nowadays, you can't even find Mike Jr. on Twitter. The deep state took away the one thing closest to his heart, which was posting all the time. He is on Parler, but even people who are on Parler don't give a shit about Parler. I leave you with Mike Jr.'s finest moment, which was a DM exchange with Jake Tapper over Mike Jr.'s Pizzagate posting. Tapper, I have the highest regard for your father and only treated him in that manner, and I have respect for you as well, but I am mystified as to why you're pushing this theory, especially after the incident today that could have ended in bloodshed. 
Michael Flynn Jr. Are you seriously saying this to the son of a veteran? <laughs> That's my absolute favorite thing about him is that he is just a comprehensive valor thief. Mm-hmm. He yeah. is a guy whose very existence is walking into a fucking golden corral in a camo and expecting ten percent <laughs> off of your chocolate wonderfall. Yeah. And only he just does it every <laughs> moment of his life. And no one calls it on it because of this weird, like genealogical worship of of uh of authority that these people have. So that he the son of a general means something. Like he he is he's he's gonna, you know, somehow be called to father following his father's footsteps even though he never went to the military and he's getting he's it's not like he's gonna get drafted like what is the idea is that they think that he's gonna do some fucking john mcclain shit if it ever if that moment ever camp comes that he's gonna rise to his father's uh, uh level of warrior power instead of just posting he's just a fucking losing poster yeah um flynn wasn't even really a combat troop i mean i think he served in granada oh that, no, was, that, that, that was a hell of a yeah, scrap yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But Flynn's, Flynn was mostly an a uh, pencil pusher. He was yeah. very good at what his job was supposed to be, but like he's not exactly like a warrior general, even though he really put on that image. Um, I I gotta say I gotta say Mike Junior is her most fail because Don Junior, you know, he gets engagement even if the algorithms are killing his likes, and uh, yeah. the Huckabee kids they can probably like. You know, they probably get free candy apples or something. I don't know <laughs> how they show appreciation in Arkansas. True. And yeah, I mean, I just epigenetic has... epigenetic valor being the only thing on your resume is it, that's pretty fail. Like that's it's pretty bad. And uh, yeah, he hasn't really been able to turn it into his own brand in any way. Like he's the biggest coattail writer out of any of them. I gotta say, he is our biggest failure. I think so. I, pretty, I think pretty so. stunning. I got to vote for Don Jr. Really? I just I just have to. I mean, I'm just so well acquainted with his failure. And just like, it just, it just oozes this I just desperation. Think the, I feel like every time he's ever addressed an audience and tried to, like, get them hi- hyped up, and like, hey, guys, uh, who's ready to get triggered? And and he can't even light up a room when he everyone no. is heat up to, to, to fucking worship him. He's every, just... I, like every room, like every picture I've seen of him addressing a crowd where he's not like just warming it up for his dad or something, uh, it's just like him and like you know twelve incredibly old women. Yeah, at you know some like Republican uh, senior citizens' home. And the fact, I mean, like I he- said, I think biggest. I, I think he's the 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 biggest sort of all around failure, and that he has a myriad of small failures in every facet of political, public, and professional life. So it's really a matter of like measuring the cumulative versus like the extreme of uh, Flynn Jr. I think My- you, I, 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 you're kind of pushing me over because do you remember the Trump roundtable with Jerry Falwell Jr. and Becky? Yeah. Falwell? Oh God, That's that true. was death. That was one of the worst moments ever recorded. And also keep in mind, like you, you see everything that Don Jr. does, like all the divorce guy shit as well. Although, like the the fucking the, the killing the fucking animals uh, shit. Yeah. Uh, you know, like it's it's. He thinks all of that is cool. He thinks a hundred percent of this shit makes him look really cool. It's true. Mm. He does. And, and it's just that me, delusion is so profound. Pathetic. And yeah. my for me, the tiebreaker of anything is how profoundly his father hates him yep. and how keenly aware he is of that fact. I feel right. like that's universal in the tur- that's like un that's challenged true. in the tournament. That's true. Because it's it's not just a it's not just a fail bracket it's a fail son bracket it's yeah. a fail child bracket and yeah. insofar as his failure to be a, a rewarding son definitely yeah. definitely yes. yes uh also one of you guys pointed this out somewhat the other day and i just want to hammer it home because i'm going through his twitter right now uh his pivot to just being a political memes guy really 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 underlines how much his presentation as a businessman is bullshit in that his bio right now still leads with EVP uh, of development and acquisitions in the Trump organization. And the motherfucker <laughs> has tweeted over 45 times today. Just memes. <laughs> yeah. So the EVP office at the Trump organization must be real empty right now because uh, not a lot of work getting done. And also the fact that his big fixation and like he's going to run for he's going to run for office in a pathetic attempt to get his dad's approval or at least transcend his father in his own mind. <laughs> and he's gonna eat shit. 
and his his issue is going to be a uh, 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 shadow banning because mm. that is the issue of the loser yeah. of I would have more engagements. I would be more validated. I would be more popular if it wasn't for the man censoring my posts. It is the cry of the it's the cri de coeur of the fucking loser. Right. And if this was a draft, you're looking at the future of the player. He has way more big fails ahead of him. Oh, that's for sure. Like he is absolutely going to make a failed attempt to run for president. He, he, he was he put a picture of himself in front of a Donald Jr. 2024 sign. And he's like, LOL, get a load of that. That's funny. But seriously, I'm just interested in the campaign happening right now. <laughs> like, come on, I dude. Think this is Who are you fooling? Be- I because his father is going to I think he really genuinely wants to do that. And his father is going to tell him no. And it's it's going to be very interesting to see if he actually defies his father and does it and thinks, you know, fuck it. Like, you know, these people are so stupid. They'll vote for a guy with the same name. Mm. Yep, he will not be happy with anything shy of being the president. And I just know in my heart that Donald Trump Jr. will never be president. All right. So we now have on the Democratic side, we have Chelsea Clinton. For the Republicans, we have uh, Donald Trump Jr., who, and these are two distinct ways of being fail. Who is the failest of the boat of them all? Hmm. Again, it's really, it's really hard. It's apples to oranges, you know. It is, and for me, I, I will say personally that I think I go with Donald Trump Jr. because of the, I guess, just the raw pathos, the public pathos of it. Like every one of his posts is a cry for help. Like every time he posts himself uh, looking down at his phone on uh, on a bed, just going like, uh, "Whoa, uh, I just had my dang algorithm just took all my likes." Uh, normal oh. world, uh, you could see just the the pain, the, the 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 demand for some validation from his dad or from the world at large, uh, and the knowledge you have looking at it that it'll never come, and that he's aware of it, and that his father is watching this whole spectacle and is is lashed by it by is is struck with nausea by how weak and pathetic his son is to me i don't know i guess when i think of it it's a richer psychodrama than what i imagine happening with the clintons which is just a test pattern Mm -hmm. just just a a a, a ekg that is flat like her posts like that awful condom post are soul crushingly terrible but they do seem to be procedurally generated so it almost feels like there's no daughter there to fail. You know what I mean? Oh, that's true. I mean, can we prove that Chelsea Clinton is actually alive and well? And this I isn't mean, an elaborate, you know, production. Yeah. Is this know? like that uh, that Al Pacino movie, Simone? Yes. That's it. I have a simpler metric. When Chelsea says happy birthday to Bill and Hillary, do they respond? Yes. Mm. Yes. That's true. Yep. Don Jr. does not get this. Not at all. No recognition. No nothing. They also just, Chelsea will spend the rest of her life as just a a bougie white person living in Westchester. Yeah. We'll have just a a normal existence and like a nice family and Christmas cards and things like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like the, 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 the she'll have hobbies uh, like her child's food allergies. (laughs) She'll be (laughs) the, the client, the, uh, kids going to have so many allergies. Oh, you can't, you won't even be be able to imagine folks. Allergies like you wouldn't believe. Uh, Uh, do not, uh, please don't bring a cactus in this classroom. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. She's just going to, uh, be out there just chopping. Chopping spinach, looking out the window, uh, stepfording it up. Uh, meanwhile, Don Jr. is going to be flailing spectacularly in public. Every razor wound of uh, of insecurity bleeding, and him just and that's what it around. is like a like a like a like a horse caught in barbed wire trying to get out and just making every wound deeper with every one of his struggles. That's what does it for me as well, because yeah. in and order to fail, you have to try. Exactly. And he and puts in the work. He puts in so much work, and, and it wouldn't even occur to Chelsea to try. The Clinton uh, jihadists, the Salafist Clintonites, tried <laughs> to get her to run for office. There was a whole uh, organized whisper campaign, and they finally had to talk to her, and she's like, excuse me, what? Yeah, have Ooh, you hello? met me? I'm, hello, I'm Chelsea Clinton. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, I guess we're just going to have to go around with like a yeah. Bill Clinton saxophone and see if we can find a kid Somewhere who uh, recognizes it to anoint the only as, way, as, the, as the Clinton uh, uh, Quetzalcoatl. Absolutely. The only way Chelsea Clinton would be a senator 
is if she inherits the seat Kathy Geis style. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, that's it. Uh, Don Jr., I mean, and, and again, I mean, for me, it really just comes down to Don Jr. thinks he's doing great. He thinks he's thinks doing that so his good. Insecurities he thinks he's are not it. on display. He thinks he's pulling one over on everyone. It's yep. like he's got a, He's got the worst fucking toupee in the world, and he thinks everyone's he buying thinks it. He thinks the lips it's, are so triggered. He thinks they're triggered. He thinks it's cool that he's dating Kimberly Guilfoyle. He thinks that's epic. He thinks him and Timothy. Uh, in, uh, he thinks him and Timothy uh, Tinfoil are the fucking are the Joker <laughs> and Harley Quinn of the right. And everyone is just kind of waiting for his public breakdown. Yep, is inevitable. That's the other collapse. thing. No, no matter what side of the aisle you're on, you're just you're just waiting for this all to fall apart and like him just not able to to, to compartmentalize anymore and just having a complete psychotic break. My my big. I am holding out for. Uh, gored or mauled by some exotic animal that he's trying to murder. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, I like think- it's it's pretty good to like try and think of like how these people will end. I mean, the a lot of this is speculation. So you think gored, big game co- hunting? Um, I think he'll die in a faulty Kybella injection accident. <laughs> I I think um, accidentally flattened by Zimboni while making a speech <laughs> at like. A Croatian nationalist hockey team season <laughs> debut. Good. Yeah, I think he, I think sometime next year he gets a call from Hunter Biden saying, "Sounds like you need a friend." Uh, and mm-hmm. they smoke crack together, and Don Jr.'s heart explodes immediately. Instantly yeah. killed yeah. by yeah. can't yeah. handle it. But no, not can't handle before, it. not before they have like a California split style adventure together. Yep. And that and is then, the movie that I want to see. And it ends with his heart just blowing up. Yeah. Yeah, and yep. Hunter is obviously the Elliot Gould. Oh, no question. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Don, uh, DJ TJ, the failest of fail sons. Yep. Uh, good work, everybody. Very proud of us. And we're going to see you guys next week uh, in the future when uh, when things will have happened. When we're New living world. in Jorgensen, America. Yes. <laughs> Jorgensen <laughs> Ventum is going to run wild. We'll see you on election night at twitch.tv slash Chapo Trap House. We'll bring you 